When the weather is particularly nice, or when my wife decides to lock me out of the house, I find myself out on my back deck with no place to comfortably stretch out. I was thinking it would be kind of nice to have a deck lounging chair for those times that I'd like to fall asleep and get severely sunburned. So I spent some time in Fusion 360 and I designed this platform style lounger. The back comes up and it's supported by some arms that swing out from underneath. Also, there's an additional set of shorter arms to make it recline even further. Lastly, the entire foot area can be opened up for you to store things like bug spray or suntan lotion or outdoor pillows or crossbows, or whatever you want to put in there. Well, that's it. Let's see how it looks once I put it all together. For some reason, my neighbor was rebuilding his deck. Well, this worked out perfect because he unknowingly saved me a trip to the lumber yard. So I grabbed a bunch of cedar to use for this project, which will be an ideal wood to use for an outdoor furniture piece like this one. The first step was to cut down the pieces that I'll use for the frame. These pieces are over six foot long, so I folded up the wings on my miter station to get the support that I needed while I cut them to length. The design I came up with uses 4x4s for the legs, so I start by making those by cutting off a section of the post that's long enough for all four of them. The next step is to cut them down to 3 inches square by making multiple passes over the table saw. I just figured it's hard to find boards or posts that don't have big dings or scratches on the outside, so if you cut them down a bit, you can actually make them perfect. Once I had it cut down to size, I could begin to cut the dados for the frame pieces. Obviously, this would go a lot faster if I had used my dado stack, but we'll just say that I wanted to demonstrate how it could be done without it instead of saying I was too lazy to put it in the saw. I simply made a cut on both sides, and then I kept nudging the fence over after each one until I had it at the perfect width. With the dados cut out, I could chop the legs down to their final heights over at the miter saw. The last thing to do for the legs is to counterbore the holes for the screws. On the long frame pieces, there's a spot where I wanted to put in a cross brace for added support. This will also get used to mount one of the decking boards too in a later step. And just to overcomplicate things, I chose to cut dados for it to fit into. Probably not really necessary since I'll be screwing it into place as well, but eh, why not? So I grabbed my crosscut sled, I clamped the pieces together, and I cut out a couple of notches for the brace to fit into. With all the pieces cut out, I was ready to start assembling the frame. I added some waterproof glue to the corner pieces, tap them into place, and drive in some screws into the pre-drilled holes. and the frame end pieces on the cross brace went in the exact same way. Now I can start to cut out all the decking boards to use on the top of the chair. This was as easy as just setting up a stop block on my miter station and chopping them all out. I only needed 16 total, so this didn't take long at all. Next, I could rip each deck board down to 5 inches on the table saw. This let me cut off any edges that were marred up or damaged from the lumber yard, or any splintered or nicked bits that were made during my 100 yard sprint from my neighbor's house. With new crisp edges put on each of the boards, I rounded them over at the router table, and then I could move on to cutting out the braces for all these pieces to mount onto. In an effort to make these pieces more aerodynamic, I drew a 45 degree angle on the ends and then took them over to the bandsaw to nip off the majority of those corners. Then over at the disc sander, I could clean things up and then sand them down to the line.
Now I could plop the boards down onto the frame and figure out the order in which I wanted to place them. Each one of the deck boards gets two counterboard holes drilled in on both ends. So in order to make them super consistent for each one, I figured I'd better devise a jig to help me. I thought that a simple stationary board with three well-positioned stop blocks ought to do the trick. This way I could butt the board up against two of them and then drill the first hole and then just slide it over against the other one to drill the second. I clamped it in place on my drill press, got my dust collection hose lined up, and then got to work drilling out each one of these boards. At this point I'm ready to start mounting the deck boards to their braces. I used some scrap pieces of wood to make some spacers so that I could hold the braces apart at just the right distance, and then I checked them for square. Once I had things perfectly lined up, I could clamp them into place. Two more pieces of scrap helped me center each deck board over the braces as well as space in the first one just the right distance. Then all I had to do was pre-drill and drive in some screws to fasten them down. Now each board was to be spaced apart from the previous by one eighth of an inch. And to do that, I simply stuck two one eighth inch drill bits on either side. I checked for square along the way to make sure I was still on track, and then I finished mounting all the boards on both sets of braces by going back and driving in all the remaining screws. Inevitably, there were some minor inconsistencies with how things lined up, so to make sure each of the deck boards were perfectly flush with one another, I ran my circular saw down the edge and took off just a smidge. Now I could clamp on the edge pieces and screw them into position. Then I glued and screwed on the standalone deck board onto the cross brace of the frame, and once that had dried, I was ready to start mounting the deck panels. I plopped it up onto the frame and I got it situated just right. To mount it into place, I figured I would use a stainless steel piano hinge. This will hold the piece in tight, allow for it to swing open, and it won't corrode when exposed to the elements. Perfect for deck lounging chairs and outdoor pianos. The other section gets mounted using stainless steel door hinges. I mark the location and I pop those into place on the center board, and then flip the deck upside down on top of it to finish it up. Now I can plug all these holes. My friend Mark never even noticed that I swiped this piece of eastern red cedar from his shop. This ought to give a great contrast to the western red cedar of the rest of the chair. I used a plug cutting bit and I drilled out about a zillion of these little plugs from the dark red sections of the board. Then over at the bandsaw, I resawed that board in a way where it would nip off the plugs and pop them out of the board. I could have used painter's tape to keep them from flying all over the place, but if I did that it wouldn't make this clip so satisfying to watch, right? After spending about 20 minutes picking up all the plugs from the floor, I could glue and tap them into all the holes. Once they had dried, I put down a few layers of painter's tape on both sides of my flush trim saw. This held it up just high enough so that I could easily cut off the exposed plugs without damaging the surrounding wood. After that, I used my random orbital sander and got things real smooth. Now I'm ready to make the support arms. I start by ripping down the pieces and then cutting them to length over at the miter saw. Since these things will need to swivel outwards, I need to round off the corners of one of the ends, so I draw out a semicircle and I grind it down to the line over at the disc sander. With that done, I can drill out the centers over at the drill press. To locate where they get mounted, I just clamp them right onto the deck brace and then I use a screwdriver to make a mark where the hole is to be made. 
Then I just pop off the piece and drill a hole. I repeat the same process for the smaller support arms and then temporarily mount them all into place. Doing it this way allows me to flip them up individually and mark just where they need to be notched out to fit properly against the frame when they're deployed. Over at the bandsaw I can easily cut out all the notches for each of the four pieces. Then with that done, I can glue up each pair of these support arms with a cross brace that fits into a dado. Once dry, I can add a round over to each of the support arm frames over at the router table. And now I can finally assemble everything one last time and test the function. Looks good, now we're ready for finish. And to do that, I'll be using the Erlex Sprayport HVLP sprayer. This sprayer is really top of the line. The two-stage trigger, the intake filter, rotating air cap, the pattern control dial, the, the gun just has a very professional and hearty feel to it, as well as all the adjustability that you'd ever need. The quick release hose is very handy, and since you don't have to water down or thin any material, it makes it so convenient to spray any kind of paint or finish that you desire. So not only was it a cinch to finish this project, it was a breeze to clean up. See only the cup and the tip of the gun come in contact with the material when you're spraying. So it's very simple to clean things up when you're done using it. So if you're interested, I'll have links in the video description, or you can just head over to erlex.com and check them out. Well. Here it is. Man, it sure turned out great looking. I love the contrast of those eastern red cedar plugs. And the overall character of the western red cedar is just stunning. The different inclines are really easy to switch between just by pulling out the support arms. And if we want, we can even lay it down completely flat. What's really nice is the integrated storage area. We use it to store a comfy pad for the chair. Hey, if you like the project and you want to try building it yourself, I'll have very detailed step-by-step -step plans available on my website over at fishersshoponline.com. Lastly, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you think I earned it, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time. Whoa, smoke. <laughs> oh crap. Oh gosh, this clamp won't fit. You idiot. Oh, <laughs> oh that setup. I forgot to tension the blade. Real smart. Real smart. I'm gonna weld you in there. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh. Oh, you jerk.